Welcome back to Bailey's Bleacher. Today we're going to talk about Bronny's debut at USC. You'll hear from a special guest about that as well. And then we're also going to talk about a controversial call that happened in the NFL. So stay tuned. All right, so about five months ago, um, LeBron James' oldest son, Bronny, he suffered cardiac arrest during a USC preseason workout. Um, crazy. He was only 18 years old, um, and this happened to him, and I'm so glad he's okay. Um, but I'm even happier for him because he just got to play in his first collegiate basketball game as a USC Trojan. Um, so going into the game, uh, the USC Trojans were 5-4 and four on the season, um, and they finally got to go and play on the court with Bronny. So Bronny recorded four points in this game. He had three rebounds and two assists um, in his 16 minutes of play. Um, he had a three-pointer um, in his first collegiate shot ever, and then he drilled a free throw at the end of the second um, after getting fouled. He has already outscored his father, uh, who has zero collegiate points, so I'm sure that's going to be really fun to rub in for the rest of his life. So Bronny was only able to play 16 minutes due to his return to play protocol um, that was initiated due to his cardiac arrest. Um, so that makes complete sense. I think that's really smart to do. Obviously, you don't want to just throw somebody back into the game after not playing for so long. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this protocol affects his rookie season overall. Um, unfortunately, though, during this game, uh, his opening game that he got to play in uh, against Long Beach State, the Trojans fell 84 to 79 in overtime. Um, so Bronny also had some really nice defensive plays uh, within the game. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, how his transition from high school to college basketball will go. It's just such a different game, and it doesn't matter, like, how skilled you are, what high school you played at. It does not matter. Going from high school sports to college sports is a completely different game. You're an 18-year-old who could possibly be playing against 22, 23, 24-year-old men. There's a difference. <laughs> because with the COVID extra year or, or being redshirted, like, you don't know who you're going to be playing against. And so... Going from playing in high school from people who are always around a similar age to playing against someone who is potentially three, four years older than you, it is a big difference. And there's no doubt that Bronny is going to have a great collegiate career. I just wonder how long it's going to last. Um, because personally, I feel like he's going to try and get into the NBA as soon as possible, which, yeah, I probably would too. It makes sense. Um, and I would probably do it sooner than later as well so that he has a chance to play with his dad because who knows how many years LeBron even has left. Yeah, great athlete, yada yada, but he's been in the NBA for like 20 seasons now. Like that is a toll on your body and he's getting up there in age. So um, he is eligible to be in the NBA draft in 2024. So there is a pretty good chance that we could see Bronny in the NBA either with his father or against his father pretty soon. Um, but back to the loss, uh, Long Beach State had three players above 30 points uh, and two players above 20 points. Abubakar Traore and Jadon Jones each had 38 points, and A.J. George followed with 36. Um, USC had Boogie Ellis, who popped off with 41 points, and Isaiah Collery with 35. Um, USC also had three other players with more than 20 points, but Long Beach State's 10 points in overtime pushed them over top the Trojans. USC outscored the 49ers in the first half, but were then outscored in the second half and in OT. So Bronny's first game goes down as an L in the books, but it was still a great game to watch, and LeBron was also in attendance, which was pretty cool. Now, I've never really been a LeBron fan myself, but my good friend Dylan Mel is. So let's hear what Dylan has to say about LeBron Jr.'s performance in his first collegiate game. Okay, let's talk about Bronny James's debut. Was it anything too impressive from the stat sheet? No, not really. But did he show off some good athleticism on that block? Yes. The ability to knock down the three-point shot, that was there. There's clear potential, personally, in terms of, um, is he going to be a one-and-done guy? I doubt it. I think it's more of a two-year thing for Bronny, especially with the medical condition. And let's talk about that. That is the biggest story here. Cardiac arrest just a few months ago, and to be able to get back to performing at a high level in a college basketball game? At Division One, that is absolutely enormous. Obviously, Bronny James, LeBron Skid, it gets a ton of attention. But this is a huge, huge deal. Cardiac arrest out of nowhere at 18 years old, that's a scary, scary place for him and his family to get back out there and perform at a high collegiate level. Big ups, big W, happy to see you back out there. Stay healthy, Bronny, and continue to grow as a basketball player. 
Thank you so much, Dylan. Guys, you got to make sure that you check out Dylan's uh, social media pages because he also has a podcast and he is always updating you on what's going on in the NFL and the NBA. So definitely check those out. So moving on from basketball, there was a very controversial call that just happened on Sunday in the NFL. So during the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs game, the Chiefs lost 20 to 17 because of a call that was made by the refs. Um, so as you can see in this video, Kadarius Tony was called offsides after a Chiefs touchdown play. Um, so Tony's infraction literally avoided a 49 yard touchdown pass from Patrick Mahomes to every Swifties favorite, Travis Kelsey, who then ran that for 25 yards, but then threw a lateral across the field to Tony, who ran 24 more yards for a touchdown. Like, check this out. Like, bam, you see this throw from Mahomes, it's caught by Kelsey, and then he sees that he's obviously gonna get tackled, and so he throws it behind him laterally to Tony, who's open, and he runs it in for a touchdown. And this play was literally one of the coolest plays that could have happened in this game. Like, you're down, and all of a sudden you have this chance to score, you see you're about to get hit, and you're like, nah, I gotta get it to my boy, and your boy runs it in for a touchdown. Like, to think of throwing a lateral in the middle of the game without it being drawn up is heads-up football for sure. And the fact that Tony caught it and he was ready for it was great. Like, this was overall a fantastic play. Um, like, everyone was just so on point during that play, and for it to be overturned is super disheartening. Um, the ref who overturned the play was Sheffers, and he really hit us with a rarely called offensive offsides. Um, and so here's the thing, as you can see again in the video, he was offsides, but should it have been called? Many, like Mahomes, are really saying, did this actually affect the outcome of the play? Um, he was barely over the line, and yes, that is a penalty. But if he was behind the line of scrimmage like he was supposed to be, would that really have made the play turn out any differently? Um, we will never know because obviously it was overturned and we can't redo it, blah, blah, blah. But they miss calls all the time that are way worse than this. And then one of the coolest plays of the season happens for the Chiefs and they call it. Um, and Mahomes went crazy on the sidelines after the call, which was very dramatic. Like, I understand being upset about the play and the call, but you're also supposed to be a leader on the field, and you look like a 15-year-old boy who's throwing a fit. Like, it was just really unprofessional, um, but I'm not a Mahomes fan either, so it kind of, like, I was really triggered by it because I was like, dude, like, stop. Like, just stop. But anyway, we can't talk about the Chiefs without talking about Travis Swift and Taylor Kelsey. Um, I've been trying to find a way to start talking about them, uh, and so I figured I'd use Travis's, like, heads-up play to kind of work this in. Um, so if you know me at all, you know I am not a Taylor Swift fan at all. I think she's super cringy, and I'm just not a fan of her music to begin with. Um, but I hate how the NFL and other sports outlets have been posting about her and talking about her so much. Like, real sports fans are here for the sports. We don't care about anything else that has to do with outside of those sports. Like, when I go on my phone and I'm looking at Instagram and I click on NFL or SportsCenter, ESPN, you know what I want to see? Sports. I do not want to see Taylor Swift's face blasted everywhere. Like, I don't care. Um, but whatever. Uh, but, you know, from the NFL standpoint... It's very smart from me, stupid, um, but you just opened up a whole new fan base. So again, like really smart decision there. Um, they opened up this whole new fan base that they never would have had. Um, but I just wanted to get that off my chest because I have been holding on to that since they first announced it, um, that they were dating. Um, but also Tony Romo slipped up the other day. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else like caught this. Um, Taylor Swift was shown on the screen and he was talking about her or something and he goes oh yeah there's taylor taylor swift that's kelsey's wife or something like that so i don't know if it was just a slip up or like is there something we don't know but anyway rant over over it um not taylor swift fan stop showing her on all of the sports platforms i'm sick of it Sorry, it's kind of harsh, but at the same time, like, don't show me Taylor Swift. I want to see sports. That's it. I don't care about Taylor Swift. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so let me know what you guys thought. <laughs> so uh, on that note, you know, let me know what you guys thought about Bronny's performance in his first collegiate game ever at USC. Um, tell me what you think about this penalty that just happened in the Chiefs game. What do you think about uh, the Swifties NFL takeover? Let me know all of your thoughts. Um, this has been another episode of Bailey's Bleacher, and make sure you tune in next time to talk about some more sports.